Hi, I'm Suzanne Matson, and in this short video I'm going to give you top tips for gathering requirements. You may be in a situation on your project where your customer comes along with all the requirements well documented and all you need to do on your team is to make sure that you implement these requirements to the specifications. But in my experience, on most projects, that's actually not the case. Your customer doesn't come along always with all the requirements documented, ready to go. So one of my top tips for you is to actually take responsibility for gathering the requirements with your stakeholders and with your customer. Don't sit back and have the attitude of, well, you know, it's my customer's job and all I do is I take those finished requirements. That's not how you get the furthest, that's not how you get the best projects. And furthermore, sometimes your customer may come along with the requirements, but they may not be trained in actually gathering requirements in the right way, which means that there are gaps in the requirements, they may not be sufficiently detailed, or they may be wrong. And in that case, you may end up on your project delivering what your customer wanted to their specification, but it wasn't what they needed. So one of the ways that you can avoid that is actually to partner with your customer and to take responsibility for helping them to draw out the requirements. There are many different ways in which you can do that. One of the best ways of actually drawing out requirements is to use workshops. So there should be workshops where your project team is present and where your customer is present and your clients as well. And you simply walk through each requirement one by one talking about why it is important, talking about the detail of it. There's a lot of issues in projects where requirements aren't detailed enough, so really get in the detail and understand why the requirement is there and also what the success criteria are of this particular requirement. How are they going to test it afterwards to make sure that the requirement complies? So really understand what it is all about and how you test it, very importantly and bring your entire project team, or at least your key project team members, along to this meeting. It is very important that everyone understands the requirements. After all, that's the foundation for what we're implementing. Also on the topic of business analysts. Of course, you may work with a good business analyst in your project, depending on the size of your team. It may actually be up to you to play that role of the analyst. So every project will be different, but in either case it is extremely good for the project manager to understand the requirements gathering process. And if, you're, if you don't have a business analyst on board, or if um, your business analyst isn't very senior, it is good for you as a project manager to play the role, um, certainly of, of the most senior person in the workshops, and actually take ownership for them. And uh, of course, make sure you document the requirements. That's really, really important. There are many different ways of doing that. There are different schools of thought. One of them is to use use cases, a use case approach, where each requirement is seen from a user's point of view, and it is simply um, a step through the process of what will happen um, when this, once this requirement is implemented on your project. It is a very powerful tool. It is very easy to understand. It uses layman terms. So if you're not familiar with use cases, definitely um, look it up and study how to use it. Another tool I often recommend that is used when it comes to requirements gathering is what we call a requirements traceability matrix. It is a tool which you can create in an Excel sheet, quite simply, but it is a very, very powerful tool. You can stretch it to your project and make it more or less comprehensive depending on what your needs are. So basically what a requirements traceability matrix does is that it, um, on a, each line, on each uh, horizontal line, you basically have uh, each requirement documented. And you then, um, on each of the columns, you then, in your Excel sheet, you track what um, the detail of the requirement is, whether it's been documented, whether a test case exists, whether it's been implemented, etc. So you trace each single requirement and you also can link it to the objectives of the project. It is a very, very powerful tool which you can also use to track changes. So um, definitely a tool that I recommend using. Not many projects use it, but it is um, definitely worth exploring. If you haven't seen a requirements traceability matrix and you're unsure about how to go about it, I encourage you to download a free template from my website, which is www.suzannematson.com, and register to get access to my resources page where you can download this template. Definitely worth checking out. 
Another thing you want to pay attention to are the non-functional requirements. So that can be requirements related to maintainability and scalability and performance and security, things that aren't um, specifically functional. Your client may not be thinking about these types of requirements, so it's very important that you as a project team think about it and facilitate it. And again, remember to document everything and remember to involve your team members and play back the requirements to your users once they're documented. Play back in order to make sure that you have understood it correctly. Probe, challenge, talk through different scenarios. There is nothing worse than misunderstood requirements. It costs a lot of money on different projects, so you definitely want to invest time and effort into getting this right. Good luck.